Welcome back. Clearly, the other big story this week has been India's decision to support the further buildup of the port of Chabar in Iran, its implications for the strategically important role that India wishes to play in Afghanistan, and how this would impact on Indo-US relations and the region. It is considered India's $100 million move to counter China. A decision to upgrade this crucial Chabahar port in Iran, which will give us easy access to landlocked Afghanistan and subsequently to the whole of Central Asia. It is uh, at a corner, you can say, between Iran and Pakistan. So um, its location is very important. You know, with uh, Pakistan not allowing our uh, goods to go through Pakistan, there is no transit facility available for Indian trade across the Pakistan. The route to Afghanistan and Central Asia has to be there, you know, and the shortest route is through Iran. So Chabar is the best location. It was during the External Affairs Minister's visit to Tehran last week that India gave its principal nod to this project, taking the bilateral ties between the two countries to a different level. We will need a route to evacuate what we produce. And unless that's available on the western side of Afghanistan, um, we will be, uh, it'll be stillborn. All our dreams will be stillborn. And therefore, this is the best possible alternative route that we have. India's response coming months after China's takeover of the Gwadar airport in Pakistan, which had India on the edge. A clear attempt to thwart China's plan to expand its interest in the Indian Ocean. Situated just around 76 kilometers from the Gwadar port in Pakistan, Iran's Chabahar port provides a free trade zone. It is extremely crucial to India as Pakistan does not allow transit facility from India to oil-rich Afghanistan. Let us not forget also it is only India and China that the two giant Asian country which having the GDP more than 6% for the next decade. Everybody is looking at this part of the world for investment, for uh, opportunities, and I think even the European knows that, even the American knows that, even the Arab realize and they start coming to India for investment. But India's agreement with Iran on the upgradation of this port is expected to irk the US, which is trying to put pressure on Tehran to abandon its nuclear program. Thus, India will have to tread a cautious line, not upset the US or raise an alarm for China. It's a bold decision clearly on India's part to build relations with Iran, especially when international opinion is keen on marginalizing Iran. And we have with us now Dr. Gareth Price from the Royal Institute of International Affairs, better known as Chatham House. And Dr. Price, my first question to you is, in the light of what India is planning to do with Iran, what could be India's motivations to build bridges with Iran and beyond? Well, the key thing in the case of the port of Chabahar is in relation to Afghanistan, that there'd been hopes that Pakistan could open up trade through Pakistan so that India could trade directly with Afghanistan. In the absence of that, India has been helping renovate a road and connections um, through Iran to Afghanistan, and the port of Chabahar was the sort of final piece. Now, clearly, when there was a lot of talk between within Pakistan about granting India most favoured nation status, presumably there was there were hopes that this would extend and ease trade through Pakistan to Afghanistan. But given the slow progress, it would seem that eventually India has decided to um, step in and, and do up the port in, in Iran to, to facilitate trade with Afghanistan. Right. Uh, it's obvious that uh, India's initiatives in Iran would carry the blessings of Washington because America has otherwise been very strongly opposed to any diplomatic interaction with Iran. So what do you think America seems to find it uh, motivating enough to encourage India to go ahead with this relationship with Iran? I would very much doubt that the Americans encouraged India to do it. Now, given that Indian goods can't transit through Pakistan, they have to go through Iran. And I think the U.S. has been, in relation to Afghanistan, it's, it's, it's understood that if it wants to diversify its trade away from Pakistan, then it needs to um, engage with Iran. And the same applies for India. So 
I don't think there'd be, I, I certainly doubt that the Americans were encouraging India to do so, but I think probably some kind of blind eye would be turned. Right. But uh, at the same time, uh, I think India has given mixed messages to Iran about Iran's nuclear proliferation, uh, where to some extent the Indian government and the Prime Minister said that that's unacceptable. But at the same time, Iran has been assuring India of a certain degree of energy security. So where do you think uh, this is going to lead both countries? I think it, it all really depends on what happens next and particularly what the US stroke Israel interpret Iran's nuclear program to be. I think that's the big question. So India's case has been that it doesn't have to abide by US and EU sanctions on Iran, though it does abide by the UN sanctions. There's an, you know, elections coming up in Iran. I think that probably waiting and seeing you know, what comes from the, the, the Iran Western engagement would have been India's ideal option. But in the absence of pro progress with Pakistan, it would seem that India has decided to bite the bullet and, and, and go in with Iran, at least on, on the port of Chabahar and in terms of energy security. Well, uh, Pakistan seems to be wanting a zero-sum solution to Afghanistan. Primarily, have no Indian presence there, hopefully for them, after 2014. But India seems to want to improve relations with Pakistan also, while at the same time having a presence in Afghanistan. So do you think there is a mixed message coming out out there? I think the position in Pakistan over the past couple of years has shifted slightly, and, and, and the position in India as well. That um, I think Pakistan understands that Afghanistan has an economic relationship with India, um, and India would seem to recognize that that Pakistan's interests in Afghanistan are larger than, larger than its own. I think with so much change, you know, elections in Pakistan, elections in Afghanistan, on both sides there's, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the elections in Pakistan and that could change the, 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 the equation. And, and no one really knows exactly what's going to happen in Afghanistan post-2014. So I think on all these things there's a lot of waiting and seeing and hedging and I think this, the, the, you know, announcing the renovation of the port at Shah Bahar is part of that. Well, uh, most political parties in Pakistan, at least the moderate ones, uh, have all expressed a desire for better relations with India. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the hardliners are for obvious reason opposed to that. And uh, public opinion is by and large in favor of good relations with India. So where do you see relations between the two countries going? I think that's going to depend on the outcome of the election. I think, you know, there are three broad scenarios. The first would be that the current alignment led by the Pakistan People's Party comes back in. Now, that, that coalition had expressed a desire to improve relations with India and was essentially held back by, because the military maintained control of the policy. So. If it were to be re-elected, it would have greater legitimacy, greater power than last time, so that would seem to be positive. But that's probably the, the least likely of the three outcomes. Nawaz Sharif's Pakistan Muslim League, again, as you say, he's expressed a desire to um, return, resume to dialogue. The question there is going to be what happens in, with internal politics in Pakistan. I mean, it is you know, widely believed that Nawaz Sharif would try to limit the power of the military given that he was ousted in a coup um, in the late 90s. So would the military let Nawaz Sharif um, fulfill what he's uh, claimed he wants to do? And the third option, which would be the messiest, would be some kind of hung power that the various Pakistan Muslim League and Imran's Khan, part, Imran Khan's party cancel each other out, and it ends up with some you know, minority coalition or a very broad coalition. And that, in terms of relations with India, you know, intuitively would probably be the, the worst outcome. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Price. Uh, clearly, India's strategic ambitions in Afghanistan would have to be serviced via Iran, but at the same time, the sentiments of Pakistan would remain a very important factor in New Delhi's calculations on its Western Front. Thank you very much for being with us, and we'll be back next week once again with another episode of Latitude. Goodbye.